This is Endeavor, a remote-controlled 3D-printed humanoid robot that I worked on a year ago. With 17 degrees of freedom, it could walk, punch, and get up from falls. I even competed with it at RoboGames 2024, where it did decently. My only regret is that after RoboGames, that was pretty much it. I didn't follow up on the project or share what I did, aside from a LinkedIn post, which is a shame because it's a very cool project. So for this year, I'm rebooting the project, building an improved version of Endeavor. Welcome to the first video of the series, Rebuilding a 3D Printed Humanoid Robot. In this video, I'd like to go over my previous work and talk about the project reboot. Endeavor was built to compete in Robo-1, a Japanese robotics competition revolving around small-scale bipedal robots fighting each other in a small ring. It was always fun watching the matches on YouTube, and for a while I wanted to build one of these robots. So, last year, I decided to make this my very first independent robotics project. I know, a humanoid robot may not be one's top choice for a first project, but I needed something outside my comfort zone. I was struggling with burnout for my 9-to-5 engineering job, and I would spend my evenings after work doing nothing productive. That's why I chose a humanoid robot. It's technically challenging and engaging, and the fact that it's basically a miniature real steel robot kept the project interesting. For this project, I had the following design goals. Design a mechanically stable robot, implement wireless control, preferably over Bluetooth, and build an effective motion control system. I also gave myself from the end of January to mid-April to complete the project to be on time for robo-games. Three months may be pretty tight for a humanoid robot, but to my credit I've done robots in two months during high school before. I started the project with some research to figure out where to start, specifically when it came to hardware selection. Two projects heavily informed my design. First was the Kero Humanoid project, which was focused on building a humanoid robot using RC servos. The second was the Make Your Pet Hexapod robot, which was about doing the same, just with six-legged robots. Both projects implemented this servo, the DS3235. It advertises a 35 kg centimeter torque for just around $25 to $30 on Amazon or AliExpress. Compared to higher-end Dynamixel or Condo servos, this is one of the cheapest for its performance specs. Both projects also use the Pi Moroni Servo 2040 microcontroller. This board can control up to 18 servos, which makes it perfect for small-legged robots. I've linked both projects in the video description, and I encourage you to check them out. With the key hardware components selected, it was time to design the robot in Fusion 360. The entire design was made to be fabricated on a standard 3D printer, which in my case was an old Ender 3 at the time. I started with the leg so I can start printing and get right to testing with the lower half that I can start writing firmware for. Each leg had four servos to control ankle tilt, leg sideways motion, and foot vertical, forward, and backward movement. Usually a humanoid robot would have a fifth servo to keep the foot level with the floor, but I do this mechanically using four bar linkages. This is common in the Robo 1 space because the arena is flat. It also saves weight and allocates two servos for use elsewhere. Here's the first iteration of the legs standing up on external power. I held off on getting it to walk at this stage, not until I put the electronics in the torso to protect it from falls. Within the torso, I stacked an ESP32 above the Servo 2040. The ESP is what handles the Bluetooth connection with my wireless game controller. Besides, the 2040 is a 30 amp relay that toggles power to the servo and acts as a safety switch. This all rests above the battery bay for a two-celled LiPo battery. The battery and programming ports for the microcontroller were accessible by a hinged back cover that could pop into place. This all rests on a servo located in the pelvis, so the whole upper body can rotate separately from the legs. After that came the arms. Each arm had four servos to allow for sufficient flexibility. Altogether, this makes 17 servos for Endeavor. With the arms done, I had a full body prototype to work with, meaning it was time to write the firmware side. I programmed the ESP32 using the Arduino IDE, and used a convenient library called BluePad32. This allows Bluetooth-enabled microcontrollers to connect to a wide range of wireless game controllers. Here's a simple example that connects my Switch controller to the ESP32. I can press the button to toggle the built-in LED, and slide the joystick to control the brightness of the external LED. I may do a deeper dive on this library in another video, but for now the project page is linked in the description. Using this library, the ESP32 received gamepad input to determine what commands to send to the Servo 2040 over UART. The 2040, which was programmed in C++, receives these UART commands and actuates the servos in specific sequences depending on the message. W to walk forward, B to crouch, 
X to left jab, you get it. These action sequences were built into the 2040. Simpler sequences such as attacks, crouching, and getting up were done by setting joists to certain angular positions and adding appropriate time delays. I've determined the poses by rotating the joints manually in the CAD model. However, this was an arbitrary process, which became problematic when I transitioned to continuous sequences such as walking and turning. For these motions, I'm actuating at least 8 servos over more than 10 unique poses. Guess and checking, as I did before, would result in a suboptimal walking gait, and that's assuming the walking gait turns out to be stable. In order to efficiently program these movements, I used inverse kinematics to define the walking gait as a math-driven trajectory. Inverse kinematics determines the joint rotation angles from the Cartesian coordinates of an end effector, which in my case was the robot's feet. Using trigonometry, I derived a set of equations that took the foot position and returned the servo angles needed. These equations were transferred to a Python script I wrote in Jupyter Notebook, in which I can provide a series of points within a trajectory and get back a sequence of servo angles that I can directly insert into the servo 2040 code. I made an educated guess on the walking gait trajectory, which is split up into three main components. The X component handles front-back foot motion, the Y component handles side-to-side -side shift, and the Z component lifts the legs up and down. This trajectory can be roughly simulated using this 2D visualizer, which serves as a sanity check before the numbers are plugged into the Servo 2040. It took a lot of fine-tuning to get it right. Parameters within the trajectory had to be adjusted to take into account the robot's center of mass, desired walk speed, and foot lift height. I even had to add torso and arm swings into the motion to counterbalance the leg momentum that would otherwise cause the robot to fall over or turn unintentionally. After some trial and error, I managed to implement a walking gait that can move the robot without it losing balance. Well, mostly. This leaves me with a robot that was technically capable to compete at robo games. However, the prototype was put together with leftover PLA filament that I got from work, and as a result looked rather ugly. If I was going to robo games, I decided I was going in with style, so I determined a color scheme, designed the headpiece with inspiration from Gundam, and built a second robot. The idea was to use the prototype as a sparring robot, but by the time the second robot was finished, robo games was just around the corner. So let's talk about how it performed at robo games. Robo games is mostly known for their combat robots, but they hold various other events, including one based off of Robo One that is called Android Kung Fu. And never played four games total, no prizes won, but I was able to win two of my matches, which was already a win for me because I totally expect to get curb stomped going into this. The competition were student teams from Hong Kong who frequently attended Robo One in Japan. To say there was an experience gap is an understatement. Surprisingly, the 3D printed construction held up very well, despite some nasty falls, and I had no piece break on me during the competition. However, certain joints needed to be retightened after every match, specifically the ones that do not have a bearing support. This is largely because there is a lot of mass riding atop of the small servo shaft. Servicing the bicep and shoulder servos was doable. However, the same can't be said for the torso joint, which is buried underneath the electronics. To get down there, I needed to rip up the servo wires first before removing the microcontroller stack, which was a cumbersome and risky process and left a ton of room for error. The combat moves also needed more work. The only effective move was the side swipe attack. If I use this in the official Robo 1 tournament, I would be yellow carded, as side attacks are much more stable than front attacks due to the leg positioning. This was allowed in Robo games, but the need to diversify my movement set was apparent. Furthermore, the small battery was barely enough to last a 3 minute match, meaning if I was down by points at the last minute, the opponent could just distance itself because Endeavor wouldn't have enough juice to catch it. I definitely underestimated the power the electronics consumed. Lastly, the servo cabling. I'm not proud of it. My final match that knocked me out of the competition ended because an opponent caught me by the cables. While I never had cables break or disconnect as a result, tightening up the cabling was something I should have done on day one. Overall, it wasn't the best performance, but the purpose for entering Robo Games was not to win a medal. Endeavor was a project to challenge myself, to make something cool and complex. What mattered most was that it brought this project over the finish line, and that is not something I can brag about often, because many of my project ideas stay in the drafts. In other words, it really was an endeavor that I'm personally very proud of. Now, after nearly a year, I want to pick this project back up again. Let's talk about the project reboot, and what to expect for the next several videos. Since I built two robots, the prototype will be remade into Endeavor 2. This robot will be a significant improvement from the first version. Physically, 
I want to clean up as much as I can. Wiring, structural integrity, joint stability, assembly, and ease of use. I also want to rewrite the firmware, as there were many inefficiencies with how I did things, especially with the Servo 2040, because it was my first time using VS Code with ARM embedded C++. Furthermore, I think I could do better with simulating the robot's motions. The 2D visualizer has its limits, especially if my goal is to do full body motion planning. I like to look into PyBullet, MujoCo, or Ross MoveIt, where I can import the robot's 3D model and work with that without needing to build everything up from scratch. I also want to think about using Endeavor 2 for more than just Robo 1. These competitions are only held once a year, and keeping it in storage until the next one is announced would be doing the project a disservice. Therefore, I want to use this robot as a generic platform for humanoid robotics to try things that interest me. Stair climbing, dynamic balancing, complex motion generation are among a few ideas that I have in mind. No idea how I tackle any of these, but it would be a fun challenge regardless. Lastly, I like to open source the project, because from doing this project myself, I found this to be a great starting point for anyone interested in humanoid robotics. If you're interested, I have a GitHub repository linked in the description. It's very bare bones at the moment, but I hope to fill it with content as the project progresses. After completing this project, I would be very interested to learn what people do with this robot. If there's enough interest, especially in North America, we could do our own Robo1-like event to see which robot is the strongest. That'd be a fun watch. But that's all for this video. I had a lot to talk about for events from a year ago, but regardless I hope you enjoyed, and perhaps learned a thing or two. The next videos will definitely be more hands-on, and show the actual step-by-step -step development process for Endeavor 2. I'm really looking forward to what's up ahead, not just for this project, but the channel as a whole. I've always wanted to do fun side projects, building robots, gadgets, and other stuff, and this channel provides a perfect opportunity to make this happen. If you want to keep up with what I'm doing, I'd appreciate if you can leave a like and hit the subscribe button. That's all for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.